Welcome back. Joining me to wrap up the week's markets action is Viv Govender from Rand Swiss Offshore. Viv, thanks so much for joining us today. Now, global markets are on track to end the week off on a high note. This, of course, on the back of those stellar results um, out from NVIDIA this week. Viv, is the positive momentum sustainable or are we probably going to see a cool off come next week? Uh, it depends. I mean, the thing that's driving a thing like NVIDIA is the AI boom, but that shows no sign of, of cooling down. I mean, mm -hmm. if you look at just how much of the uh, SP 500, for instance, was dependent or the NASDAQ was dependent on AI related stocks, we're talking Microsoft, Tesla's, uh, you know, Google's, uh, NVIDIA's, and so on. Uh, that is quite a huge chunk, is majority, in fact, you know, of some of the indices' uh, performance last year. And so if you look forward, uh, you know, going, going forward from here, NVIDIA is saying it still basically can sell everything it produces. And that means that there's still a large demand out there in the market. So that might be a positive thing coming through. Mm -hmm. The thing that might derail things is, of course, the U.S. Fed now talking about not raise, but not cutting interest rates as quickly as anticipated. Even some people like Larry Summers coming about talking about that, the fact that the next I know rate change might actually be a hike, which I think is very unlikely, quite frankly. Mm. But, uh, you know, the, even the fact that even people are talking about it is obviously negative for the market. Yeah, that, that, that tone with um, Fed officials saying that we might see interest rates remain higher for longer has somewhat, you know, dimmed some of that light that we are seeing. Now, back at home, we had the Minister of Finance, Ino Korongwana, deliver the 2024 budget speech. Treasury said it'll be tapping into the gold and foreign exchange currency reserve account. Would you say that traders welcomed that budget or is the JFC um, just on the high? on the back of what's happening globally? Uh, I think if you looked at what happened yesterday, I mean, which would be the day that you would think uh, being affecting the, the uh, uh, or being most affected by the budget speech, you know, the movement yesterday, the big gainers were basically things like the resource sector. Mm. We saw some of the resource stocks do reasonably well. Uh, that has nothing to do with local markets. Resources are primarily international. If anything had to do with local markets was the fact that the round had weakened through 19, uh, and that helps, you know, commodity producers. And I don't think that's a positive sign. Uh, for you know a budget speech if you do a budget speech and the run weakens because of it mm. i'm not saying that the link is that quite that strong but i mean the only thing that moved the market up yesterday was resources and the only thing that could be affected by the budget speech by resources was the uh, currency and if the currency was weakening after budget speech it was not a positive reaction by the market let's stick with those resources that you've mentioned in company news tungela has warned of a profit hit but surely this was expected considering those logistic issues um it's been facing yeah, look, I mean, we've had huge issues over the last little while mm -hmm. around what's happening with, uh, especially not just commodity prices, but self-inflicted wounds like Transnet. Uh, you know, was, they talked about market challenges coming through, uh, strategic challenges, you know, was, uh, basically saying the overall environment they're operating in is quite negative. Uh, I do think that if you look at basically uh, most of the commodity producers out there, you're very rarely going to find a commodity producer who doesn't, you know, do a reasonable job in terms of actually taking the commodity out of the ground and getting it to a customer, you know what I mean? Uh, unless unless they are basically being affected by, you know, this, um, you know certain things like, like Transnet, et cetera. Now, that means that they are very vulnerable to what's happening in the overall economy. And they mentioned the fact that there's been a bearish trend in coal prices. We know why that is. We are seeing, you know, it's obviously production volumes being under pressure uh, because of some of the issues in South Africa and related, you know, to the general economy as well. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it, uh, I think it's, it's a pretty negative number but we anticipated a negative number coming through. And, you know, um, it's the same sort of issues that also impacted the Anglo stable. We saw results out from Anglo American, the parent company. We saw numbers out from Kumba as well as Amplats. Um, lower commodity prices hitting Amplats, Kumba iron ore um, going through those uh, issues uh, from Transnet. Uh, Kumba and Amplants were also warned of job cuts and Anglo reviewing its assets. What did you make of that overall performance? Um, okay, look, I mean, with Kumba saying, basically they're saying they, there's no use producing as much as they were producing before because the stuff is just sitting in the rail and the ports mm. and it's not really going to their customers. And so, you know, just producing and not being actually sold to the customer, then it, it, it makes sense to cut back on production. That's, that's a Transnet entirely rich issue. Um, with Amplast, I mean, they're facing a, a couple of issues other than that as well. Uh, you know, to, so we know what's happening with the electric vehicle market. We know what's happening with the car industry. The trend over the next decade or two is going to be towards more electric vehicles. And in fact, some parts of the world, like in Northern Europe and in like California and so on, they talk about banning internal combustion engines by 2035, which is 11 years away, uh, not that far away. So in that scenario, basically, if you think about the fact that 
the main source of demand for uh, platinum group metals and platinum, uh, the largest source of demand rather, is actually you know catalytic converters for these particular kind of vehicles. That's it's a long-term negative cycle that you're not going to escape from. At the same time, you know, uh, there's recycling happening from the old uh, catalytic converters. So the stuff is not just produced and wasted. You can take the old stuff out and recycle it. So if the amount of carbs don't go up, you can basically supply yourself into the future. So these are long-term structural factors that are quite negative on a different scale, I would think, than what's happening with Kumba. Mm. Now, gold miners in the meantime had a better reporting period with the price of the yellow metal shooting up. How many gold um, with an update seems to have benefited for that, from that, expecting profits to surge over 100%? Gold fields um, in the meantime had a bit of a tough, tough time as it dealt with um, higher costs. What's your sentiment around the gold miners? Yeah, again, um, look, I mean, there's, there's a couple you know, issues here and there in terms of what the break even price for, you know, how many was the DRD versus gold, et cetera, is. But generally, they depend on the underlying market. Uh, obviously, mm. uh, you know, or paradoxically rather, if you were thinking the market's going to go higher, uh, you know, significantly, you want to actually go, you know, buy the thing that produces at a higher marginal cost. Why? Because there's actually a bigger optionality from that. Uh, will gold prices go higher? I don't know, quite frankly. Mm. I mean, looking at the gold price right now, about 2,000, it's had real problems breaking through 2,100. And, you know, to, if you had to go look at the gold price, you know, over the last say, decade plus, uh, I mean, we were talking about hitting 1,800 back in the early you know, 2010s to 2011 or so. And then coming all the way back to 1,200. I know we've recovered since then, but you know, once we hit, you know, just about 2,000 back in 2019, there's been almost no movement of the last five years in price. You know, it's like five percent up in five years, which is nothing. But before I get into your stock pick, let's talk about Quantum Foods. Um, it says that trading has improved, but it is still expecting tough times. Now, this has been the case for most of the poultry may, uh, producers, as they dealt with the impact of the bird flu as well as low shedding, right? Yeah, that is true. And I mean, look, uh, to a certain extent, they've, they've recovered uh, some of those losses because of the fact that, you know, the price has gone up. But they've also experienced, I mean, I think the government has re some res or, uh, just released or basically loosened some of the restrictions they've had on imports coming through, which, you know, we don't produce at the cheapest possible cost uh, in terms of uh, chicken production in the world. There's some operators out there in places like Brazil, etc., that do produce cheaper for the things that we can import. I mean, there's obviously some cross subsidization by China mm. because they like things that we don't like and that kind of stuff. Uh, but that being said, um, I do think that, uh, you know, it's an important factor, the fact that uh, we are seeing, uh, you know, food inflation, especially in South Africa, come down a bit, but still remain above the 6% level. Mm. Uh, the fact that we have seen, you know, uh, you know the issues with bird flu, uh, which is obviously something that you can't really forecast a year or two out, who knows when it comes back again in, in force. Uh, so it's been a very tough time for these guys. And the one thing I would say about the, the food sector that people don't quite, you know, fully factor in is climate change. Mm, people often talk mm. about the fact that, oh, there's un unusual uncertainty here and there's a normal, like, you know, level of rain, a normal level of, you know, heat, a normal level of something else. No, that's a normal level historically. The future is not going to look like that. Mm. But what you think has been the abnormal level could be the new normal going forward. And that's the one thing that people, I don't think, are fully pricing in into the uh, food production sector is that the agricultural norms that we think this is the normal rainfall, this is a below normal year, or this is the normal temperature, this is the above normal temperature year. That is not really true going forward. Mm. And, you know, we had a conversation um, about a week or two ago around Valentine's Day when we chatted to a soft commodity analyst about how weather conditions within West Africa are pushing up um, those cocoa prices and the sugar prices at, as well. So it would be interesting to see how that plays out. Now, before I let you go, what's your stock pick? Uh, it's a company called ASML. It's a European-based company. And what they do is they produce the machines that are used to produce the computer chips that NVIDIA and you know AMD and all those other guys sell. You look at the NVIDIA's share price going up 15%, 16% yesterday, you know, going up, you know, multiples of the last couple of years. You could AMD, look at even ARM that did over 50% in one day, mm. five zero percent in one day. These guys all are competing in the chip space, but there's one monopoly above them all. It's the guy that makes the chips. The machines that make the chips, and that is what ASML does. Ah, Viv, thanks so much for your time and those insights. That was Viv Govinda from Ranswiss Offshore.